Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I wanted to make more videos about networking in Python and to kind of go forward with where I left off, which was uh, making uh, a sniffer, listener, whatever you want to call it. Um, I want to get into packet manipulation. So that's what this is going to be about. Uh, the only difference uh, with this is it's going to be in multiple parts because it's a little complicated to just do all in one go. So it's going to build up and hopefully build off of the same code that I have here, um, which is I essentially wrote it to make it so it could be done in that manner. Um, if you're here, I would expect you know what packet manipulation is. Um, essentially, we're going to be um, either just making custom packets data packets or we're going to be um you know forging legitimate ones or we're going to be changing or tweaking manipulating um ones that already um or you know are being communicated um not to us potentially but through us or something like that right uh man in the middle type of stuff so for this particular portion i'm going to start with just udp and we're not going to get into the manipulation or even forging part yet we're going to get into creating a custom packet that's important if we can make a packet and do have it do what we want then we can work our way towards changing other packets right um realistically it builds off of this principle of making a packet you're not really going to just change it you're actually going to grab it throw it away after you modify and then send that out, right? So it's actually a completely different thing, realistically. Um, so I'll explain the code real quick. This is gonna be pretty a pretty short video just because there's not a whole lot to it, but it's gonna give you time to spin, you know, and figure out what's going on, calibrate, shit like that. So I wrote a class called packet manipulation and what it's designed to do is encapsulate the entire manipulation process within one class that includes receiving sending you know changing whatever right it's going to be all of it now right now i wrote it to only do um creation and um and making a socket and then sending um but it will be built upon right so but that's the intention so i just made a little in enum here for tcp and udp i just like to do that um and i also there's a note there right i made a lot of exceptions like way too many just so it'll be easier to play with the code and then you'll know right away that there's a problem um so i'm making it kind of hard to mess it up so trying to watch my language a little bit um hopefully you know what classes are i would expect if you're doing pack man manipulation in python you understand the you know prerequisites that you know this is built upon primarily um just socket objects in python which is a, a file descriptor you know and you have to create one and then you you operate on that object to receive, send, do whatever. Um, the class isn't really a big deal, but doing stuff like this outside of a class is gonna be a little difficult. Um, the shared state is kind of, you know, the power of the class. And so if we're going to be receiving a packet eventually, and then we wanna manipulate it, wouldn't it be nice to receive it, put that into a class, figure out what we wanna change, change it in the class and then have it generate an, an object within the class and then just say you know class dot new data and then that is now the new data we're sending and it's all encapsulated we don't have to do all this other crazy stuff it's almost like a black box you say change this uh field and it does and changes it and then it we have the new data available to use um something like that right so for now i just have an initialization I have a create socket, um, a send, 
send to validate target. And then at the bottom is just the code that is how you run this. Now, I want to be pretty clear on this. This is essentially, at least right now, a wrapper around what the socket can do itself. The sockets have methods. That's how you deal with them. Um, and my methods are on top of theirs. You could say, hey, why didn't you just do it on the socket? Well, that doesn't let us get into the other stuff like I was talking about. Might as well start it off like this, so then it'll be easier to implement the other components. Um, almost plug and play. And we can add and remove as we see fit without ruining anything. And this also then allows me to give a more rigid or um, structure to it so I can basically tell you you did something wrong instead of having to worry about the socket components doing it or even refer to the, the source code of socket because you know what you don't have that here so um, there are other differences though too that I wanted to to add so let me explain what these are real quick so this is this is part or important for the initial setup phase and dealing with this stuff. It's gonna be pretty much, if, if you don't wanna deal with this, then there's no point of even, um, you know, trying to do packet manipulation because this is, you know, it's gonna be more about this than it's gonna be about anything else. Uh, managing your sockets and receiving and sending the data. Uh, the manipulation component is relatively straightforward. I mean, it's just changing byte strings to a different byte string, right? So. The create socket is all it's doing is making a socket object and now right now it's hard coded for um udp right to make it easier so it's going to be a udp there's not any real connect that you need to do except i have one there and i'll explain why um so it creates a socket for uh udp and then i made connect as an optional named argument for one when we go to tcp it's tcp requires a connect so then it'll be for that right now for udp you can still use connect um the benefit of using connect with udp is it basically just stores the um it stores the object the target so which is just the ip address and um, destination port it stores that that means i don't need to do send to which i have down here right so send to every time i want to send i'm saying send this data to this target if i use send i just send the data the only difference is one is doing it with an understanding of where it needs it to go and the other one has to be told every time it's kind of like a convenience to use connect on UDP it's not actually connecting right but I like to use it for that convenience because why not cleans the code up and does all that now because of that I gave an option on send to to accept an optional argument or an optional target which would override the one that's in the class the one that you send in um, that really doesn't actually even, um, Hey, actually I just noticed this is messed up. All right. Uh, I swore I tested this. Oh, cause I didn't test that part. I didn't test that part. Let's be honest. I didn't test anything. No. Um, okay, hold on. That needs to be like that. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to. Ooh. Oh, 40. Uh, target equals self. Uh, target. <sighs> oh, fuck. Oh, I did it backwards. Jesus. If not target, target equals self.target. And then, because then, 
do 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 part. All right. So we have the code, right? This code is going to do a basic socket creation. It's going to then send data over that socket to the destination, the target that we defined here. Or if we overrode that for whatever reason, somewhere else in the class. Now, going back to how I was saying you could do this out of a class. This is how easy it is, right? So this is doing it outside the class just with socket. Let's go back and look at this. You can see here's my send of the why me again. And then here's length three, the lol. This is how easy it is. So, you know, when people or when people ask me, why don't you scapey? I ask them, why the fuck would I use scapey when this is all you need? It's pretty basic. Of course, like I said, the management of the sockets and the management of the data is the complicated part. So going back, just to reiterate, the reason why I made this class right now is to allow for future compatibility, imp implementations, whatever features you want to call it, right? And to assist with troubleshooting your code. What you can do is you can just import this code into your um, uh, your project and use it and send random shit. That will be also, that will probably be just as good as you messing with the code directly. Now, I would still have you refer to this, right? If you can receive and then manipulate, that would be great. Even if you can go on your own and do that. I'm gonna make a video next. It's gonna be, we're gonna be basically putting in we're gonna, I'm gonna be smashing the listener with this part, right? So I might even add a little bit of manipulation, but the next step after this is simply mirroring back what someone sent you, right? But on a completely separate, like off, off to the side, right? So they send me some data, I receive the data, I get the data, I put it through here and I send the data. That is the next step. With that, with me mirroring it, that means I, I effectively can now do whatever I want with it and then send that instead, right? So what I mean by do whatever I want with that, a lot of times responses to protocols and other things are very similar to their what's being sent. You are just going to go, okay, they sent me asking for this, okay. I'm going to send them back all the whatever details. I'm going to send them back all the checks, some information that I got. But what I'm actually changing is just the little minor protocol component or the application component of whatever protocol it is, right? I need all the other things probably to stay the same. Like DNS, for example, when you respond, when I ask for a DNS, um, like when I do a query, the server actually responds with my exact um, uh, query and then adds the answer at the end. So they take it, use that, add their answer and give it to me. And that's how DNS works. It's almost just where you take that, you can, or you can almost just take that, flip the IPs, right? And add the, the answer. And then you're pretty much done changing, like making a, your, a response. And then, and then, right, manipulating that would be give them a response that's bullshit. Like, the IP doesn't even make sense. Or, you know, the IP is their own IP. Or something like that. Which we will go over. I have a whole bunch of proxies and stuff. I can show you how to do it in line and things like that. And like I said, that's going to be down the road. So let's just get started with this. And remember, I don't know how or what I'm going to chop up from this. But I'm sorry that it's all jacked up. And hopefully you can, um, you know, make sense of what that monstrosity was. It couldn't be worse than last week. I mean, not with what happened to me, but everything else, you know, um, the whole dumpster fire plus shit show thing or whatever they're talking about. 
Um, but yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to uh, reach out to me um, when I stream on Twitch. Stream every day. Um, there might be some changes again with that, but I stream every day and you can hit me up there. I also have a Discord um, server. I'll link it below. I'll link the Twitch below too, actually. I forgot to mention that. And um, yeah, yeah, have fun. Hopefully I can get the next one out soon. It's not going to be that big of a deal. We already have the listener code written. We already have this code written. All we have to do is merge them. And then we have a nice little parrot code base, code software, whatever. And then instead of parroting, we change before we parrot. And then we're not parroting anymore. We're just changing and sending back, right? So, and then that's like, that's like the real deal right there. Done. Anyway, all right. Thanks, guys. Um, catch you around.